So we are Friday morning, the 29th of September, and I'm just at the back of the house here. I'm with my postcode cattle, as we call them now, and I'm making this little video because, as you can see, the skies are blue, and I'm actually going to pause it now because there's dogs roaring behind me. I want to check it out. Okay, so false alarm. I don't know what the dogs were barking at, but they're all right now. So basically, I was saying we're up here. We are after being through what they called Storm Agnes, I think, and then another flood again yesterday. So the rain is relentless. We haven't had a break much out from today, and I think there's more rain coming tomorrow. Now, they're up on the hill here at the back of the house. There's only a couple of fields, but with the small little uh, herd, mini herd, we have small little cells made. You can see, no, I'm on every other day moves. So we can go back here and that there is four days rested. And we can see the lovely sweet picking that's actually coming up there now still, which is great. Heading for the first week of October. So they've been on this in that relentless rain for the last two days. And I'm about to move them across the wire here. over onto real woolly grass which i think is ideal now for these conditions so you can see and you can hear the water underneath the scraw so big heavy cattle hanging around for a long time could make a lot of uh, you see you'll notice actually that on the fence lines where they kind of tramp a bit uh, they walk over it secondly so it's the second tramp or tour tramp that makes the that makes the damage so they do a lot of fence walking if they're kind of tight in the small bit now i'm giving them one square bay today to balance them out because this is what they're on now so this is real woolly grass the bulls and that black heifer were rotated around this hill and a bit of ground down the road as well and i took them off so how long are they off it? That lady roaring again. Uh, this could nearly have three months rest. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it could. Well, look, it has plenty of rest anyhow, so it's very strong, tall, and woolly. So it's ideal. So they'll eat all this off to about what we can see here and what's left underneath them will keep them from tramping the ground too much so this is a slightly bigger area i've took away the corners here here's another little interesting thing that i've done you can see our trees up here now we have a lot of ash trees here and we have well this in where the hens are there i have my spruce and i have my sycamores and i have my alders planted in there but i've whitened that out with the ash dieback i wanted to kind of replant trees i put them in when i found out about ash dieback so they're starting to grow, but my trees are holding up well here, to be honest. Now, what I have put in here, you can't really see it now, is mountain ash, birch, and white horn. So I've made little cells in here. It's only a small place at the back of the house, and I thought little small paddocks would be nice. Uh, little hedges. Sick bays or for small animals or whatever you want to do. A little small, even for the girls to play around in. So I'm going to open up this fence and let these in now. What's this one at? <laughs> She's scratching her lip. So a good blue sky morning today. It's a rarity these days and I'm going to take advantage of it. So we're still early in the morning. I'll pause this here now and I'll let them in. Lovely stuff. So, as I say, twice, or not twice, but every other day moves with these uh, with these little bunch of cattle. So they have a nice woolly place here, they have their clovers and they have their grasses, and they'll have a little bit of hay then this evening. So I let them fill up on grass now, and then tonight I'll throw them half a bale, and then a half a bale in the morning, and it'll do them another 24 hours, and then we'll move on up around and into the back there so they're not doing any harm the 
There's actually a lot of people that are talking about housing now at the minute, that land is saturated. Well, land is saturated, but I think with that, that grass that's a little bit longer and has been tramped down and soil armour put down on it over the year, it's holding up that little bit better. So these are getting excited now, they're after being let in. <laughs> they love getting moved. So that is the story now. I have a lane made up here now also. I planted a lane. Now it's very, very, very small. I only put it in this year. Bare root trees. So there we have what's going to be a lane up there of birch. And then we have further up here, I've made three little paddocks. Now they're really small. They do a cow for a day, depending on the grass that's on it. There's lots of plantain there as well. Look at that. That's lovely. So we kind of had a bit of a frost last night, didn't we? But it's definitely heavy, heavy dew. So we have our clovers now as well. And plantain. So I like the diversity that's on this hill. So we have very young white horns in here also. And every so often we have another mountain ash. So there's three little paddocks in here. And then we have an open field at the back. I'm definitely putting in a back fence because I want to allow whatever they have been on to recover. Whatever it can do at this time of year, even though it's still early, September, it's warm, still, mild. And we're only just past the equinox, so there's 12 hours daylight. Even though it's behind the clouds for most of the time. But they are very happy to be in here. They're backsides are clean so they're not getting overly wishy-washy runny and the bit of hay then is keeping structure to their dung and their stomachs and there's a few red clover flowers look at that lovely stuff so yeah on this sunny morning a rarity a short little video of the new postcode cattle paddock on a Friday the 29th of September. So for now I'll say good luck and goodbye.